You guys want to go on an awesome journey? We got 12 weeks. Change your life. We're going to be uh, starting off building greatness today, getting the body fat tested. I'm going to show you guys how to start a fitness program. Um, kind of the pitfalls to watch out for goal setting. Let's go get that body fat test and see. Um, I just got done with surgery. We're going to see what the damage is right now. Here at Body Spec, they do DEXA scan. I've only done hydrostatic. And if you guys have watched some of my older videos, you guys see where I get hydrostatic tested. I'm really excited because this one is super legit. Dunk Tank had her at 19.8. We had her at 27. Wow. So there's a lot of ways to get your body fat tested. Like same I said, person, same body fat. So this gal got her, her body fat tested the same day she did calipers one site, calipers three site, calipers seven site, hydrostatic dunk tank, which is what I've always done in the past at the university, bod pod, and uh, DEXA scan, which is what we're doing today, was definitely the highest. This is something that's pretty cool. We have five pounds of what fat looks like here and five pounds of what muscle looks like. So people always say muscle weighs more than fat and what they're talking about is the volume or the really just the size, like fat takes up so much more room than dense hardcore muscles. So, you know, when we start about setting goals and training and following a program, what you wanna do is minimize this and get this. So you might not necessarily lose weight, but eventually what we're doing is we're substituting this with this. And because this is so much smaller, you might weigh the same, but you can't let the scale hold you up. That's why doing stuff like getting your body fat tested and body fat composition is so important because it really allows you to figure out if you're making progress in the right direction. This makes you feel miserable. It makes you look miserable. Let's switch that up. On this, I'm guessing 13 to 14. So you can see, you can see, oh I do. I'm looking at, look at, I guess, is that showing the bone and everything? I got a really wide head. I once went in and got my, I think I told you guys when I got glasses, um, the eye doctor said the only person that has a wider set head than me was a uh, 300 pound Samoan guy. So I was like, I'm in good company, so. <laughs> So the first thing I want to point, oh, well, then you I saw it already. Yeah. Well, I just, no, I just saw that now. Yeah. And we weighed you at yeah. 222 today. Really? Okay. And we got that because we can scan your body fat. Okay. The lean tissues, muscle, and organ. Okay. And the bone mineral content is your skeleton and pounds. Gotcha. So these three scans is how we weighed you. Okay. And then just simple division. Fat by mass gives yep. us that 11%. The greens, it's muscle and organ. Muscle and organ. Yeah, so it's lean tissue. Yo, I got some I got some big legs and big there, arms. There's no yeah. organs in your legs, that's, so that's all muscle. Yeah, yeah. That's, I got big legs <laughs> and big arms is what it looks like here. My chest is weak AF though. <laughs> okay. On the next page, the first thing we're gonna do is calculate a resting metabolic rate, which is the number of calories that you would need to eat at rest each day. So if you just laid in bed and you didn't move, um, your muscles and organs because they have to sustain and keep functioning, mm -hmm. are burning that many calories just to exist laying down. So that's sort of a minimum you should ever eat. If you ever eat under that, you'd be starving the existence of your muscles and organs that day. We don't want to do that. Right? 
Um, sedentary jobs, I put at 300 calories. Mm -hmm. So if you had a desk job or you're just laying around the house watching TV one day, I'd, I'd notch that up to 2450, 2500. Gotcha. Right? If you were looking to cut calories to lose weight, you could only cut down to your RMR. You wouldn't gotcha. want to go under, right? So to lose weight faster, you'd have to get more active, right. try to work out, stimulate the muscle so you don't lose it. So for really lean people, this visceral fat is mm -hmm. a bigger indicator of health. Gotcha. Um, so we're looking for the internal fat now, that, that visceral fat's in and around your organs. Yep. And we're sitting here today mm -hmm. in pounds, so under half a pound. The average man we scan is around 0.95 pounds, so just under one pound, so okay. you're well below average. Yep. The top three to five percent of men we, we measure, we do see a zero there though. A zero. So it is possible to get down to zero. But their overall body fat would be quite a bit lower too, right? Um, not necessarily. So like, I've seen people have much higher percentage body fat than you with yep. zero visceral fat. Um, so for men at 2.7 pounds, doctors would say you're at a population that's at higher risk for heart disease, hypertension, mm -hmm. but specifically diabetes. Gotcha. So it has a lot to do with um, how you eat carbs, gotcha. or theoretically. Some people genetically are a little bit different, but for most people, if you're eating too many carbs at once, like okay. concentrating a meal of carbs, or you have the wrong carbs, high glycemic, right? right. Alcohol, processed sugar, white bread, white rice. Gotcha. Those are gonna digest super fast, those mm -hmm. calories flood into your blood, your blood sugar spikes, and then you release a ton of insulin to say, hey, store all these extra calories right away. Gotcha. And that what is what it encourages visceral fat. The rest of the report would be tracking over time. So every time we get a scan of you, we're gonna break you into these regions. Yep. And we'll be doing a fat report and a lean report. So the visceral one is the really the one I'm I'm yeah. I, I really want to bring down. So in the I future zero. Yeah in the future we'll be we don't graph that but we report all the numbers so we'll have today's measurement and yep. the future scan right next to each okay. other. Okay, we're gonna try to get to 5.6 in 12 weeks. So that's, oh, shh. yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm so excited. Hopefully we're, I'll be here. We're gonna, that, that, that's almost cutting the body fat <clears throat> in half. Yeah. It would be. Yeah. Cutting the body, because I was what, 11 point what? You're at 12, 25 pounds of body fat. Okay, but I'm talking body fat. Oh right? yeah, you're gonna have to drop that. They, they were, sorry, what was their body fat? Is, is this what their fat tissue was? No, their, their body fat percent was 5.7. So if I wanna go 5.6, I'm looking at almost exactly. Now you're trying to break the my, record here. Cut yeah. my body fat, fat in, half, in 12 weeks. Okay. That's the goal, so we'll see how it goes. Good luck, man. <laughs> I, I look forward that. to seeing you again. Always bittersweet getting your body fat tested. I'm excited though, because it's allowing me to now start. I'm the type of guy that once I'm switched on, it's go time. So. Again, I was 11.5%. I found that typically that would mean I'm about 8.5% or a little bit 8.3% hydrostatic tested. Uh, so you're gonna be a little bit higher if you do it this way. The lowest they've ever had were two Swedish bodybuilders that actually I met at Gold's Gym, funny story, that were both 5.7 and 5.8. Stry striated glutes, just insanely shredded. So we're gonna definitely try to get down under six and see if we can't get down under 5.7. That would be insane. That'd be the leanest I've ever gotten, and I would never wanna live like that, but it's always kind of fun to push your body. I wanna to try to live at about 9% DEXA scan, which would be about six and a half, seven percent hydrostatic. So it's a good place, because now I can go and I can figure out my macros. I figured out what my base metabolic rate is, how much muscle is, how much muscle I have, how much I wanna lose, and how long that's gonna take me, and then it's just a math problem working backwards to then figure out macros, carb rotation, I'm gonna set my protein and fats and then manipulate carbs and manipulate fats a little bit too. So we're gonna jump into that once we get home. I'm really pumped to start this out. Really pumped to get back into it. I feel like it's been too long since I've done this. I love the science behind it. Got my report card. And it wasn't too bad considering head surgery, had the hernia repaired. Um, so now, what I'm doing is I'm sitting down to kind of calculate where I want to be. So this is where I'm at. I weighed 222 pounds. I was 11.5% body fat. But I want to get, it's just that competitive juices in me, I want to get under 6% on the DEXA scan there. So that's my goal. I could do you know, a show if I wanted to. I could do a photo shoot. I have 12 weeks. I might be doing a photo shoot in eight weeks for bodybuilding.com. I don't know yet for sure. If that's the case, I wanna be hopefully around 7% DEXA scan for that. So it's really just a math problem. My resting metabolic rate today, just like he said, if I did nothing but lay in bed, it would burn 2,170 calories a day. That's a rough estimate. Again, you can't be exact on everything. You know, I know obviously that's within probably 5%. 
um, plus or minus of that. So it's no big deal. My activity level is 800 calorie, 800 calories. I wear a Fitbit, um, so I know, and, and I'm saying this is activity in the gym. So there's gonna be other activity during the day, but I'm starting at out at 800. Um, and this has kind of been where I've started before for other preps and whatnot. If I'm eating 2,840 calories and I've been kind of eating around there and I've been noticing my weight drop real slowly, like less than, less than a pound a week. Um, so I'm going to stay there, kind of allow my body to get healthy, make sure I'm getting enough calories. Too many people when they start a fitness program, they probably cut calories too drastic. So they want to see so many changes right off the bat and all of a sudden they're, they're cutting way too many calories. They're feeling like crap. Their workouts are like crap. They're not getting a pump. You don't need to over diet. So I'm starting this off very safe. 230 grams protein. Carbs, 300 grams right now. I'm not carb cycling yet. Because carbs are protein sparing, I don't need quite as high of protein. As I cut down my carbs, the protein will bump up just slightly. Um, I'm gonna be doing 80 grams fat. That's pretty high. I wanna keep my joints. I'm gonna get back to lifting heavy. I want to make sure my joints are feeling good. Fat helps out with that. Fat helps out with hormone levels. Now that I'm getting back into the gym on this big program, it's important that I'm feeling good, feeling rested. My body's not tired yet, you know. We're moving over. Because I know the, the big program, I help write it. This uh, phase two session is really about more or less body composition, getting bigger. The first round is getting stronger, and there is a difference between getting bigger and getting stronger. That being said, um, because of the surgery and because I, I haven't worked out in a while, measurements are a little bit soft. Um, arms are 17.8-ish, so 17 and three quarters roughly. That's no pump. Waist is 34, which I'm feeling a little scubby. That's pretty, I got a pretty big waist at that, at that point. I don't like that. Calves are 17, chest is 44, and then uh, these are the numbers I wanna hit. I would love to be 18 to 18 and a half, no pump, 19 with a pump on the arms. Um, waist down to 31, calves up around 17 and a half, 18 would be ideal. You wanna have calves and your arms pretty close to the exact same. And then chest, at least 46, 47. And again, the reason why I think I'm able, to, gonna be able to do, increase my measurements is because I, I'm gonna be able to get stronger and bigger on this program. Um, even while I'm decreasing my calories, cause just because I haven't been lifting. If anything, the time off has really motivated me to get back after it, although I don't want to rush into anything. But you can't know where you want to be unless you know where you're at. And we're really setting it up systematically as I go. I don't want to lose more than about a pound a week, and I, and I shouldn't have to. I have you know roughly 12, 12 pounds to lose, 12 weeks to do it. Up to two pounds is okay. And even that first week, you might lose a lot more. Um, because there's water that, that is also you're going to be losing, especially that first week on, on a cut. Um, but, you know, 12 pounds in 12 weeks is, is pretty damn good. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how my, my, uh, my goals here in 12 weeks, how they do. I got a lot of trips. I got Hawaii. I got, I got a lot of things coming up. It's going to be hard. But the, the way you, you kind of counterbalance that is keep track of everything. And your goal has to mean something to you. You have to remember, why are you doing this right now? I don't like the way I feel. So it's time to kill it. Time to get back into the gym and just absolutely have a blast doing it.